Hi there and welcome to another plein air painting adventure and today we come down to uh, overlook the river where the Carrick roads are quite wide. We're near Myla and we're going to be in a field overlooking the river. Anyway before I get started I thought I'd have a nice pasty warm me up. It's been a frosty start to the day. Good Cornish pasty what you need and that'll keep me going now for a good few hours so I can get stuck in some painting. See you in a minute. Right, so here we are, We're just about to get started, and it's a lovely morning as you can see. Frosty start, still quite chilly, but uh, just a pair of gloves, fingerless gloves, all I need, hat and a jumper. Perfect, very calm, no wind, and uh, that's the view we're going to be doing over that way. And uh, yeah, perfect, birds are singing, they think it's spring, uh, going to get painting, what more can I want? Perfect for a Friday, lovely. I've just done a quick plan of what I was going to do. I've changed several times. So I wanted a little bit more. I know there's not much happening in the sky, but I want to have a bit more in there because it's quite bright. So it'll give, it, give us the brightness in the painting. And I've positioned my far headland there. Got some the trees here running along there. And this, just, this is the line of the field. That's all I need to do. The rest of it is sort of done tonally. That's as much as I need to do to give me a start. Now I can start filling in the colours and tones now, which is a bit I like. Yeah, so after that initial sort of drawing with the brush, just to give me a rough idea where things are going, I start by just blocking in that uh, sky in a, some rough colours, rough idea of what I'm what I want, that sort of uh, pale blue, very bright, sort of yellowy, greeny blue, just above the roseland there. So just before the tractor comes back round again, I thought I'd just show you where I've got to so far. Blocked in the uh, sky and the water, so I've got nice bright water. I'll add more colour into the sky, but I'm just going to carry on blocking in these other areas now and uh, see where we are after that. So here comes the tractor, flail mowing the edge of the field. That's Matt in his tractor. It's all right, good chap. But the initial blocking is basically done with a uh, sort of turps added to it to the paint. And I've got my little pot of medium as well which I add to the paint as I after, when I put layers on after the thin terpsy wash Although for this one I didn't repaint really too thinly tractor's just done his third pass it's good of him to let me be in the field though while he's doing it yeah really good so very grateful for that but he's on his third pass at the moment so it gets quite noisy as he comes around so here's an update while he's going down that end of the field the sky's blocked in and I've started to block in these fields behind. As you can see, the trees and the woods are all quite some quite nice colours in there. And I've just added a bit more colour and life to the water. I'm just going to really concentrate on the top half of the painting, really. And uh, I'll just block in this area in a minute to get some colour on it. But I'm, this is the top half I'm really interested in because all, all the rest of it I can make up in the studio, no problem. quick update on where we've got to so far uh, start just to fill in some of these details now as we're running along here so altered some of the reflections put some of the houses in across there which is uh, St Justin Roseland and run that 
along to there. So I'm just gonna, now I'm going to block in this area, I think. Yes, yeah, so this is just a quick, uh, rough idea of the colour of the uh, grass and, and like the cool areas and the warmer areas in the foreground and where the shadows uh, come along. That's what I was interested in there. And there you go, the tractor's just uh, disappeared at this point now, so you can re really get an idea of how quiet it is and how peaceful it is. So at this point I'm just uh, making a few notes here of where the sort of, uh, water pops through the trees there, the gaps in the trees, is obviously winter trees, this is January end of January so there's no leaves on the trees so you can see quite a lot of the river through these uh, uh, twigs and branches and there's a bee come to say hello that's where we've got to so far just a basic block in really got all the main features in and I've just sort of marked in where I think where these trees are and the, with the water coming through so just a rough idea of what's going on I'm just gonna I need to put a few shadows in and I will finish this off in the studio when it's a chance to dry a little bit more You see where that looks like a torch, how the sun's just in the ferrule of the brush look. It's like I'm painting with a torch on the end of the brush. You see the reflection. Very strange, quite hard to be your eyes that. You can see look there. It looks like I've got a torch on the end of the brush. I had to move the easel around a couple of times because the sun kept just coming around towards the right there. There yeah, look, see look at that. Looks like a torch shining onto the painting. Just the last few pieces now. Just keep giving myself as much information as I can so I can finish this off back in the studio virtually from memory. Right, so we did a little bit more than expected uh, that was another five minutes or so added on just couldn't resist it but that is definitely it for today and I'm gonna go sketching now in the uh, field where a farmer said I can go into and have a look at the other side of the creek so I'm gonna do that before the Sun drops down too far and we'll carry on with this in the studio what a lovely day So here we are, we're back in the studio now, so I haven't done anything to the painting. I've had a good look at it while it was drying and I've decided I wanted to change the sky. I was very interested in the colours that I could get in the sky, so I started with a very sort of pale violety grey. And introduced a little bit of warmth above that and here I'm just adding in some sort of like um, manganese blue mixed with a bit of lemon yellow and I like to get that sort of brightness in the sky there you can see it's almost green and it's slightly bluer at the top so I'm not obliterating everything I did outside even though it might look like it These are, this is quite a thin application of paint I'm putting on so the underpainting everything I did outdoors will still come through now and influence what I'm doing now. And I just brightened the water as well so that had that lovely bright blue water. And that's the, that's the sky and the, the water were the two things I really wanted to 
bring through and that sort of lovely warm glow in the trees where the sun was uh, on the, towards my right hand side and that gave a nice glow there was a nice lemon yellow patch the field there in the background there it is I really wanted to get that in that was quite a nice little feature on the distant headland there and there's sort of a warmish glow over there as well two different types of trees on that headland there you have the conifers above that area that I was just painting there so you've got your deciduous trees the woodland here where I'm painting now and above that and to the left hand side I'd like a conifer plantation by the looks of it so it's quite green there's a cool green on the fields there and I'm painting in now and that's what we've got that's you can see the paint surface now the paint quality that's that's how I like to paint that's why I like doing it in, doing it in layers you can't get that if it's that sort of quality of uh, paint texture and surface if it's just purely a la prima done in one go it's, it's a very different to uh, finish these are the houses there and St just as they've just some of them just catching the sun so I'm just sort of tinting the white the different different tints it's the rigger brush There's the messy brushes, I'm just uh, halfway through the painting. And that's mixed, mixing up that nice sort of um, almost pink, sort of tan pink colour, which was uh, where the sun was catching these trees in the foreground. And that's what it looks like if you're on the floor looking up. So yes, yeah, so all this is done with what, four brushes and a my trusty palette knife, which comes out for a bit of scraping back every so often, just to keep the surface paint surface roughly the same consistency through the painting until I sort of uh, add the last few layers in, which can go in quite in pasto then. But if I'm painting over an area with several sort of uh, layers wet in wet I like to just scrape back every so often just to keep it from getting too thick and messy and every so often yeah I've got a little reference photo on my phone so every so often you can just see me look down to the left and looking at that just to remind myself roughly what I'm seeing but it's nothing I don't I'm not using that to stick to it's not a photographic representation there's the photo I was looking at so I'm just sort of using it as a rough guide to uh, help me follow just give me an idea where some of the cool colors were like there nice sort of cool gray green and that can be laid into these sort of shadow areas to give a bit of interest in the in the foreground field just basically a lot of scumbling going on there it's quite dry that that uh, area where it's uh, uh, dried from the outdoor session and I didn't oil out this one I just painted straight into it I could have rubbed some linseed oil onto the dry paint surface but I just went straight in I quite like that dry absorbent texture to paint on top of at this stage yeah I'm just adding a bit of uh, life into that part of the field something a bit lighter and there you see just scraping back to keep it keep it uh, fairly consistent thickness of paint so it's not getting too thick and unwieldy and now just sort of scumbling over the top of that dry layer so that paint underneath has got to be dry 
this, this sort of scumbling technique so then you can let the the under, under painting come through you see it's wet into wet that's impossible for me anyway and I've always painted like this with oil it's just uh, but I've got a lot more carefree now don't worry so much I used to want to have to get everything spot on with colours and positioning and things and I used to paint quite very realistically now it's a lot freer and I enjoy it much more just having fun with the paint yeah really good fun not getting too uptight about it and if it doesn't work it doesn't work you just sort of accept it and move on to the next one just so yeah so all the, my sketching has helped with that just helped me loosen up and I really enjoy my painting now I used to paint things that I thought might sell that's and that was a big mistake now I just I paint what I want to paint and if it sells it sells if it doesn't it doesn't I've enjoyed it that's the main thing that's what it's all about for me just having fun enjoying the process hopefully this one will be on the walls in the exhibition in Truro the Royal Cornwall Museum in the summer it's on for three months everything to do with the uh, Carrick Roads which is what we're looking at there the river as it comes in from the sea on its way up to Truro yeah, lots of wreckies and lots of sketching out on location lots of painting on location and studio work so it's going to be a very varied exhibition including uh, nice drawings as well There's more scraping and scratching with the palette knife just to have a little bit of uh, texture in there and just sort of uh, mess that area, just sort of to sort of uh, get a bit of interest into that area. And this is where I'm adding some of that nice warm earthy sort of colour, just sort of like a pinky tan colour if that makes sense. It's just like a raw sienna mixed with a bit of alizarin crimson and lemon yellow or cadmium yellow and here is the cooler colour now which are where the trees are in shadow so that's more of a violety grey and that balances quite well with that warm colour then so the warm colour will glow against that and that's an old rubbish old brush that is but it's very useful for certain things like what I'm doing there And that's what we ended up with so we had uh, so three sessions really on that I had an outdoor session one very short indoor session in the studio where I did the sky in the water and then finished off all the other areas so it's not not too many hours work on that but uh, yeah very enjoyable hope you enjoyed it and as usual thanks for watching please subscribe to the channel and bye for now